So in this video, we are going to discuss uh, the phase diagrams for continuous systems. Uh, we already have a video previously about discrete time, so now we're focusing on uh, continuous systems. Now I'm going to give two examples. Let's start with the Lorentz system. Uh, of course, it is a system of uh, three differential equations. Okay, we have previously discussed this a bit uh, on the video about the bifurcation diagram. Uh, there we also talk about the phase portraits as well. So this system has uh, three differential equations, three parameters, and a very rich behavior. Now, let's say I want to solve this system, okay? I'm going to solve this numerically in MATLAB. So I'm using a technique like ODE45. And in order to obtain the solution, what do I need to do? I need to first define the starting point. So I define my initial conditions for x1, x2, and x3 at zero time. And I define the parameter values, right? So I set them, I obtain the solution, and I plot them with respect to time, right? So I have a time series solution for x1, x2, and x3, the three states of the system. In this case, by the way, the system is periodic. Now, uh, these are fine graphs. Okay, I already have the solution, so I'm pretty much done. But what is the phase diagram, which is also called a phase portrait, right? The idea of uh, these diagrams is to plot the solution of a system, not to, with respect to time, but with respect to each of the states. So uh, in this way, either in two dimension or in three dimensions, I plot and I represent the interconnection Okay, uh, between the state x1 and x2 and x3. So I plot their values with respect to each other for each time value. Okay, uh, and the idea is that in, with this way, uh, I can represent the trajectory of the system. Uh, that's the idea behind the trajectory. Uh, I can represent how uh, the solution moves in the state space of solutions. And that's what I mean by that. These are the phase portraits are either they are either two-dimensional or three-dimensional. So in this case, on the right here, uh, you see the interrelation of the state x1 and x2, x2 and x3, and x1 and x3. Okay, so all the possible combinations. So they directly show us uh, how the two states uh, change, you know, uh, with respect to each other over time. And you can see that, uh, especially in the three case where I plot, this is the state space, okay, x1, x2, and x3, all the possible values. And the black line is actually the trajectory of the system, which shows us how the three uh, states change uh, directly with each other, with each other uh, over time. Okay, so you see that the solution uh, that you saw right here, if I plot it in the three dimensions, what I obtain is uh, this shape, okay, this double circular shape. So the trajectory goes back and forth and follows in the three dimensions uh, this curve right here. Okay, which is a period one, we can understand this from the bifurcation diagram. So you can see I have a much clearer visual representation of uh, these three time series solutions. Okay, because now I can understand where exactly the trajectory lies in the state space, right? And of course, this changes with different uh, parameter values. So here I change the value of beta and I solve the system again. Again, the system is periodic, but the period now is period two. And you can understand that uh, by plotting the trajectory of the system. So again, these are the phase diagrams. And you can see that now the shape is similar, uh, but uh, now the trajectory fills the space a little bit differently, just a little bit, because now I have this uh, double, I don't want to call it helix, you know, this double circular motion where I go twice uh, back and forth. And then again, I fall into periodic behavior. So the trajectory repeats itself, but it is different from before. Okay, so again, very useful, the phase diagram. It shows us how the trajectory uh, gets, uh, you know, it, how the trajectory fills the space uh, of the states. Again, if I change the value, here the system is chaotic for beta equals one. So uh, period is lost here. The trajectory becomes... Um, you know, uh, it, it loses any sort of a pattern behavior. Again, if I plot it in the 3D space, you see uh, this uh, behavior right here. So this sort of attractor uh, fills the space again, uh, but a different way than before. You can see that there is no pattern here. Uh, the trajectory goes around again and again in circles. Uh, and of course, if I plot it for more and more time, like two, five, 10,000 seconds, it will begin going like that. 
uh, with no specific pattern. Okay. So again, uh, the face portrait shows us uh, this sort of double circular shape uh, that the attractor takes. Okay, so this is not really visual and understandable, but just by looking at that. Okay, so that's the idea behind plotting the trajectory of the system because I can immediately understand where exactly do the values uh, lie and what is the shape of the trajectory, right? Uh, and of course, this is the classic, okay, a Lorenz attractor. And let's see, I'll show you, you know, a different example just so that you can understand that the shape of the attractor will be very, very different uh, for different systems. So just as an example, we are going to take the, uh, the Rosler system, another very well-known uh, chaotic system, again, three-dimensional. Again, it has three parameters, A, B, and C, and a very rich behavior. So let's obtain the numerical solution. I set these initial conditions and these parameter values. And for this set of parameters, uh, the system is periodic. I mean, it is very obvious uh, by looking at the trajectory. It looks like sinusoidal, really. And if I plot... Uh, the face portraits again, I can understand the shape of the attractor. Okay, so in the state space here, you see that it's sort of a curved uh, circular, a curved round shape. So the trajectory is clearly periodic. It goes like that, following this circular shape. You can see that it looks kind of ellipsoid if I uh, project it on x1, x2 uh, plane. But on the x1, x3 plane, it looks kind of like the wind of an aeroplane, right? So much different shape than before. So we can immediately understand what is the trajectory uh, shaped like. Of course, if I change the parameters, I'm gonna obtain a different solution. Again, I change the parameter alpha. Uh, so the system here is again periodic, but I have a different trajectory now. And again, from the face portrait, I can understand it uh, feels a sim it has a similar shape in the state space, uh, but now it's a bit more complex. It has a period of two that we can understand from the bifurcation diagram. So the trajectory starts from this place and goes one time up, then one more time higher, and then goes back again. Okay, you can understand the shape again from the two dimensional phase diagrams much clearer. So different case from before, but again, we can very easily understand the shape of the trajectory. And again, for a different parameter set, now we have a period four, and I can understand that from the 3D shape, okay. Again, the shape is similar, but now it becomes more complex. It takes up, uh, the trajectory takes up pretty much the same place, the same space, we can say, in the uh, state space of the uh, system. It goes twice. Uh, it goes, you know, one time goes higher in this place, and then goes back down, and then higher, and then back down. One more time, it goes up, and then it goes higher again. So it follows, again, this periodic behavior uh, by four times this circular shape, right? And then once I change the parameter again for 0 0.44 uh, for alpha, the system now loses its period. It becomes erratic, so the trajectory here is chaotic. And I can understand the shape of the chaotic trajectory again from the phase diagrams. So you can see now the pattern becomes completely irregular and fills the whole space of this uh, shape, you know, this is the attractor of the system. Uh, so much different shape from before, much more complex. And again, you know, uh, this doesn't provide me with a lot of information about the shape of the attractor. It's not really clear, but now I can see directly the shape of the trajectory. It fills up this whole uh, plane right here, okay, the attractor. So as you can understand, uh, phase diagrams in general are uh, much useful uh, for giving us an understanding of what the trajectory of the system looks like, okay, if it has a specific shape. And especially in chaotic systems, the shapes can be of many, many different forms. Now, in the description of the video, uh, I have a MATLAB code in order for you to plot your own uh, phase portraits for these systems. So thank you very much.